Tim Zhu, son of a legend, Costa Zhu, son. Tim, uh, so very happy to have you on the show. Thank you for taking out the time to come on the program all the way over from Australia. It's really our Australian edition. We just had Ebony Bridges, so we've been talking uh, Australian boxing. And, and you a bunch, since we have a lot of panelists and we have some questions from the people, I'm going to jump right into it and uh, just say I am responsible for the interview with Danny Garcia talking about you, talking about going to Australia. He didn't seem to know you. Let's start there. Do you believe that he didn't know who Tim Zoo was? Well, look, I've been under the radar here in Australia um, due to all this COVID stuff, so I haven't been able to to put myself in the international scene yet. So um, I want to come in with a bang, so, you know, slowly, slowly. So is there any truth? There were some internet rumors going around that Tim Zhu wanted to offer Jamel Charlo a $10 million offer to come to Australia for, for all those belts. Is there any truth to that, or was that just the internet chatting about? Man, I'm not too sure. Um, my promoters do their thing. Um, I'm not sure where that figure came out with $10 million. Um, it's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so you think it's a lot of money for a Jamel Charles? I mean, he has four of the belts, right? I think he has four of those belts, Tim, in your hometown? Yeah, I think so, but look... Um, at the end of the day, he's not a Manny Pacquiao or Floyd Mayweather or Canelo Alvarez. Um, the reason, you know, $10 million, that, that has to be able to sell money. And, um, you know, the only three names that come to my mind is, is, is those guys that can sell that much type of money. So when you announced on Twitter the other day that uh, you look forward to fighting Castano, was it because it's easier to make because you're number one in the WBO or because you've seen the performance and you think you can capitalize? Oh, well, look, um, first of all, I am, I want to become mandatory for, for the WBO title, which, which will mean that Castano is the, the man to beat. Um, and second of all, I think I do have the tools to beat him, even though he put a, a great uh, performance in, um, you know, styles make fights, and I believe I've got the, the style to upset him. Uh, ladies or gentlemen, you can jump in. If not, I'll go to the people's questions really on you guys. Yeah. Uh, Tim, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. I, I want to ask you this question here because like, even the way you, like, you're introduced or the way people talk about you, it's always the son of the legend, Casa Su. A lot of us were big Casa Su fans, right? How do you balance like being proud of your father and, and embracing that legacy, but at the same time, not being under his shadow, becoming your own man? Like, like how, how are you balancing that as a fighter? Yeah, look, at, at first it was, look, it, it's got its perks. It's got its, its good and bad. Um, I'm proud of what my dad did and, and what he's done. And, you know, he... He's, he achieved a lot in his, in his great career, and at the at the same time, it's it's helped me accelerate my career and, and gave me a platform here in Australia to be on pay per view um, at such a young age. Um, and I was able to capitalize that, you know, and I, I was able to beat anyone, everyone that was in front of me. So um, it's you know I, I need to get myself out of out of the shadow, of course, eventually. But I need I need a, a big name, someone that I can I can prove myself to in in that international stage, you know. And I, and it's just a matter of time for myself. I've been consistent for five years and been training hard and fighting anyone who's in front of me. Tim, uh, thanks for joining us, by the way. Real quick, given because I don't think we gave his record, 19-0 and 0 with 15 KOs, uh, originally from Sydney, um, now stays in Rockdale. Uh, so – Let's talk a real quick a little bit about the uh, Mel Castano fight. Uh, you know, I've seen some stuff that you had said about it, but uh, just give us your overall um, assessment of the fight. Who won? You know, what you think? Yeah, in my eyes, I think um, Castano did enough. Um, in each round, he he won won the rounds clearly. Even though Charlo was um, landing the the bigger shots, and you know, at times, again, the the power that, that he produces, you know, it was it was definitely showing. But in, if you score the fight in, in how it's supposed to be scored in 12 rounds, uh, I think Castano won, you know. Um, a great fight. Um, but yeah, in my eyes, I thought Castano won. So since it wasn't a draw, I mean, so since it was a draw and you can't just say, hey, I wanted the winner, after watching that fight, which one of those guys did you say, 
man, get me in the ring with that guy. I'm beating him right now. Castana. Castana yeah. was the man. Yeah, Castano was the man. Uh, I like his style and the fact that he comes forward, throws bun- a lot of punches. I love that. And it, it's always, oh, I've got a type of style that's similar to that where, where I'm not going to take a backward step. So, you mm. know, it's always when you've got two guys that are coming forward and, and they're not taking a backward step, it's, it, it always brings entertainment. Uh, Charlo was, uh, you know, he's a, he's a smart fighter, um, stays on distance and, you know, does trust and tries to play those type of games. And, you know, um, again, stars make fights. And then when you got me and Castano, that type of two stars, it's going to be cool. That would be a war. Mm. So, Tim, uh, what do you think of Ebony? Um, she's made a long lasting impression on America and the UK and kind of came out of nowhere. What do you think of the blonde bomber, Ebony Bridges from Australia? Oh yeah, Ebony. Um, yeah, she's she's exciting. I haven't watched too many of her fights. I think she she last fought in um UK, was it? Mhm. Yes. Yeah, and, and um, I remember seeing a post picture where she's she's bruised up and all that stuff. Yeah, she's Good a warrior. War. You know, yeah. good on her. She's she representing actually, Australia well. She actually gave you more credit uh, than most for the horn fight. She said that. She feels that Horn is, uh, you know, say what you want about Horn. I think her words were, say what you want about Horn, but he's a very tough, you know, fighter and awkward. How was that fight mm. with Horn for you? Because, you know, obviously he gave issues to Pacquiao. Crawford, you know, did what he did. Um, so how was mm. your experience? Would you say he's a bit awkward and, and, and difficult? Yeah, he's, he's awkward and difficult, but, um, you know, honestly, I didn't have any trouble with him. Um, I think I got hit with two jabs and that's it. My face was quite clean after. Um, and all I, I I just came in with the right game plan and stuck the life out of him and, and that's all it took. All right. Well, ladies well, and gents. Well, okay, go for it, D Styles. No, real quick. No, uh, what would you call your biggest win or, or your better win in terms of – I mean, not. Uh, I mean, this kind of sounds dumb. I don't mean from like a commercial standpoint. Obviously, Jeff Horn is the bigger name than Dennis Hogan. But to you, Dennis Hogan, I guess, fulfilled that fight within your division, at, whereas Jeff Horn was kind of coming up. I guess. Uh, wh- what was the more important, or what what did you learn more from which fight? Um, I think with Hogan. Um, That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I was I was comparing myself. Because Charlo fought Hogan as well, and then if you, yeah. if you watch after after the fight, um, Hogan still wants to continue on once uh, Charlo <laughs> knocks him down. And then with me, he was he didn't want a bar of it. He as soon as they threw the towel, then he was you know that's it. I don't want I don't want to fight anymore. Uh, mm. And there's two different types of stars. You can jab you, you can land the, you can land a cleaner shot, or you can actually put someone into a position where, you know, I, I don't want to fight anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And that's the position that I, I put my opponents through. Hey, just a quick follow-up. So when Mario asked you about when you watched the fight, you said, you know, did you say to yourself, okay, I want to fight that guy. When you say you like Asano's style, do you, mm-hmm. and I know you mentioned it would be a great fight. It would make a great fight. Like, are you saying you would have a more exciting fight with him or is he more beatable? Like for your style, like what, what did you mean by I th- that? I think the fact that it's going to be an interesting, interesting fight. Um, of, of, you know, he's he's full of different surprises that I haven't fought that type of style yet, and, and that's I want to test myself with that. Um, with Charlo style, it's very slow. Um, there's not much output. Um, he's very strategic. He he plans certain shots and counters certain ways, uh, which I'm I'm for I'm down for. Um, but but with Castano, it's 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 an interesting fight because you know the the shots are unpredictable and and, and that always brings out a good fight. I've got a question for Tim. Tim, this is uh, Maestro. Um, your father was one of the last great fighters to represent the Soviet Union as an Olympian, and his style was described as a Soviet style. How would you describe your style? Oh, look, I've got a, I've got a mixture. Um, my, my coach has, has gone through my dad's career, so I guess it comes from the same boxing school, um, and you're taught the same exact stuff. Uh, but look, you, at the end of the day, you, you create your own style and do, do, whatever, do whatever it takes uh, for myself. 
Um, I feel like I've got a bit of that, that Mexican type style in me where it's walk forward, um, eat the, eat, kill them with the body shots, get them with the head and just suck the life out of them and, um, you know, use certain shots to, to break them down. Uh, I'm going to go out to the people. San Antonio, James Valdez, what's the backstory on the nickname The Soul Taker? <laughs> that's a, it wasn't from me actually it was um it was from uh from the commentators uh in australia but i used to i used to tell my opponents you know i'm here to take your soul i'm here to to put you into a position where you're going to quit and where you're going to say no no more and that's that's where it came from cool cool next one is from steve in the uk says hi tim thanks for coming on the show your dad used to rock an awesome ponytail have you ever thought about bringing that ponytail back to keep <laughs> nah, the man, zoo it's, it's, family it's not, in fashion, not in fashion anymore <laughs> <laughs> yo i remember for that ponytail i do man. too yeah. i do too that's a good question that absolutely did, that did there was rumors that different. that's where the power came from right oh like oh, the bible the pony. yeah surprised. power in the pony <laughs> yo it, that's like from uh what is this is it solid in the, in the Bible, right? That you cut his Samson. hair and then he had no power. <laughs> yeah, Samson's here. Samson. Samson. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so the rest of that was best of luck with the career, champ. And once again, thanks for coming on the show, Steve, in the UK. So uh, next up is Coach Myers, who's in Connecticut. And he says, do you plan on getting that IBF mandatory called and winning the purse bid to bring the title fight over to Australia? And who is your top three pound for pound fighters today? Um, well, I think I'm more in the WBO. Uh, the IBF, I think it's some some Russian bloke uh, just got a um, yeah. mandatory. Ba I think Bakram. Bakram. Yeah. Bak Bakram. Bakram. Mm. And um, top three pound for pound. Um, I reckon Canelo Alvarez, number one, that's for sure. Mm. Um, Crawford. And uh, the Japanese bloke, N N yes. Inoue. Inoue, yeah. the monster. Yeah. Yeah. You just made these <laughs> guys. You just, ma you just made these guys very happy, Tim. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, we got the landlord who says, "Name the top three fights you want." Top three fights I want. Um, number one, Gennady Golovkin would be would be a dream. Um, number two. Charlo. Wait, wait, and... wait. But, but, but what if Gennady, because I can see Gennady and his team coming at you because of who you are in Australia. You you would move up for that fight or you're saying eventually if he's yeah. still fighting when I yeah. get to 160? No, no. If, if, I, if I'm given the opportunity to fight uh, Gennady Golovkin, I'll take it with both hands. doesn't matter what way mm. for me. Next. Wow. Well, Golovkin also likes to take guys that are moving up in weight. So. Exactly. This is actually a, a, a fight that can that can happen. This is something that I can think happen. So too. I mean, he's fought a bunch yeah. of 154 pounders, and you are the most lucrative 154 pounder by far. And look, we can. Uh, I'm sure we can do a big stadium fight here in Australia if if, if that's possible with Gennady Golovkin. So you you feel he's ripe for the taking right now? You can pluck him off right now. Look, you, you can't. Um, you got to be. How do I say? You got to be respectful, Cerebral? of course. Oh. But you you got to you got to believe in yourself. And uh, these are the type of fights that every young youngster dreams about. How big would that be if you can land that fight in Australia? What, how would how would do you think Australia would react? Oh, uh, look, Australia reacts now crazy with every fight. You know, I'm I'm on a pay per view platform. Uh, We've built myself here as a, as a household name, which, you know, a lot of promoters try in America, try overseas everywhere, and, and we, we've done it here in Australia. That's why I'm keen to go overseas and, and test myself here, to overseas, of course. Um, but this, this if, if a fight like that ever lands, um, again, it will be the biggest fight in Australia, for sure, of all time. All right. Uh, next one is from Mr. Adore. Would you sign a deal with PBC to secure any fight opportunities? For example, a title fight or a big name, like if they offered you Charlo, Danny, and another PBC name, would you take a three-fight deal? Uh, look, I'm I'm currently signed with a promoter here in Australia. Uh, the best thing about that is that we're we're allowed to work with we're allowed. 
we're able to work with PVC, with Matchroom, with with Top Rank, and we're not signed with one one certain promoter and having to fight only that type of stable. You know, I'm able to to fight anyone and everyone, and that's the best thing about being in in my position right now. All right. Uh, next is Big Casual. What up, champ? After Jamel Charlo's performance over the weekend against Castaño, do you think he should be on the pound for pound list? Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, you should have seen your face. Listen, what do you think about Terrence Crawford coming out and saying, "Hey, I've been gone for a while, but Jamel, this is exactly why you're not on the pound for pound list." <laughs> I agree with him, you know. <laughs> I agree. I think Crawford. I think Crawford is a talent of his own. You know the way he reads opponents, the way he fights. Um, compared to Charlo, he, Charlo doesn't adapt. He, yeah, he threw a few jabs and did a few counters, but he just that that IQ and ring craft. I don't see as much as Crawford. You know. Wow, Charlo's about to be an angry lion when he hears this. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, man. You've been giving Crawford some praise, right? So he he struggles to get opponents. It's it's obvious. What if you win this this WBO and he all of a sudden calls up Paco? It's like, look, man, I've been your champ. I've been this is my tenth knockout now. You know, I want Zoo. What do you do? Hundred percent. If he wants it, I'd, I'd love to fight him. Yeah, this is the type of fight you're born for. In America, know? or do you say you want me? You better come over here. Man, I'm easy. I'll, I'll fly to America any day. Wow, <laughs> this is you're you're about to become my new favorite fighter. My man wants to fight Charlo Castaño. He even wants Crawford. <laughs> you willing to move up right now, I, like and fight Gennady? I think that's gonna make headlines right there. Gennady might be calling you. I think he, you know you're right up his alley. You, you're not a you're not a guy that's gonna be on the back foot. Not that you can't be, but you know your fights look like you want to give some action fights. That's kind of what the recipe he looks for. But go ahead, Mario. Apologies. No, no. Uh, I know this is like a hard question to answer, and it's probably not even worth asking. But just based off of everything you know, the economics for a fight against a Crawford type, do they do? Is it a guarantee that y'all make more money in Australia because you're, uh, I mean, a household name, like you put it, whereas Crawford fights in a sport in America that is a niche sport. You know what I mean? It's not part of the top three. Uh, do you think that you could draw him over there with the kind of finances that y'all would do? Yeah, it could. Well, look, many Pacquiao came here. So, yeah, that's um, exactly. You know, and um, look, look at what Anthony Joshua does in the UK, you know. Um, again, household names, and, and um, unfortunately in America, these guys aren't hot household names, you know, because the, the sport isn't as popular. I don't know what the reason is for that. Um, but here, we're, I've, I've become a household name, and, and the fact that um, we can get fighters like that into a stadium, I think it's, you know, a lot of fighters can, can fight in front of different different arenas, but to, to fight in a stadium with, with, with screaming fans or the, in the, in a whole stadium, I think that's an experience on its own. Mm. Tim, uh, have you traveled to Moscow or Russia at all, and would you have any interest fighting over there? Oh, yeah, it's, it's been a dream of mine. I've, I've traveled all the time there, but, yeah, it's been a dream of mine. And, uh, I think the guys are working on something, hopefully, in the future. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, so I, hey, had a big, let me a big jump base there. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Is that future fight with Karabanov? Because I know you've been linked to Liam Smith, and now that he lost in Russia, are you trying to see what happens in Russia with Karabanov? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I think I, I think that will definitely be happening in the future. That's for sure. Man, Tim, this is our first time talking, but you're pretty like ballsy, huh? Oh man, you know what? I'll fight anyone. Um, I, I feel like I'm an old school fighter these days. People pick and choose, and uh, certain promotions choose their own fighters. You know, you got at the end of the day, you just, you just got to be out there to fight everyone and anyone. You know. Is this the first time you verbalized the Gennady Golovkin thing? I'm just so shocked. Not only that no, you no, would do it. They, they've spoken about it before, actually. Uh, it's just always been a dream of mine. That's that's my that's my all time dream fight. Man, I feel like that can happen. I think we need to say that a little bit louder. We got Ryan O'Rourke mm. in Liverpool. 
How close are you to a Liam Smith fight? I hear that you want him next. Have your team made an offer? I'm a Liverpool guy myself, so I love the Smith brothers with all three done in boxing. Did you think Liam beat Karabanov like I did? You're the A-side, so why pick a dangerous opponent with no reward? With, against Liam Smith? I mean, I'm assuming he's talking about Karabanov because he beat Smith, but he did ask, right. are you linked to a Smith fight? Yeah, we were supposed to fight, actually. Um, the My promoter was in the talks with with, with Liam Smith's team. Uh, I'm not sure what happened, uh, if it's fallen through or it's, if it's still going and bubbling along. Uh, but hopefully that does what yeah, gets, gets done in the future, that's for sure. Brandon in Houston here in America says, are there any active fighters who you got? out of your way to oh go out your way to watch excuse me anyone who you consider a can't miss fight fighter to watch um canelo alvarez mm. wow no tank huh oh i love tank man he's a beast <laughs> as well <laughs> forgot uh, all about him actually yeah tank man <laughs> so um i don't know if you know leonard ellerby said the tank could possibly do a welterweight pay-per-view and he said a big i quote pay-per-view at 147 who do you think tank can pluck off right now at 147 oh that's being a bit ballsy there um <laughs> yeah <laughs> who, who are the champions there uh, well i don't think it'll be a champion but if you want champions it's crawford earl spence has two belts crawford has one and ugas has another then you got Sean Porter, Keith Thurman, uh, Jerron Boots Ennis, Virgil Ortiz, Connor Ben, I mean, Samuel Vargas, or, you know, those type of names. Amir Khan is there. You know? Yeah, right. Well, I think the boys are a bit big, actually. Yeah. How, how would Khan I mean, do versus Tank? Stop it. I mean, I mean oh, it's, it's... It's a ridiculous question. You're right. Yeah, Con, Con kills him. <laughs> Let him answer, yeah. Mario. Mario's trying to. I, he's trying. To, he, you know what he wants to say. I mean, he, why well, are you look, trying if, to influence if him? If Khan's got his chin up, then he's going to be. He's in for for trouble. But you never know. <laughs> Listen, Samuel Vargas oh, put yeah. Khan down. If Tank touches him, who knows? So um, another little crazy thing is Andre Berto just appeared on the WBA top 10 rankings, Tim. Top 10. He's been inactive for four years. What do you think yeah, about yeah. Andre Berto? I mean, they say the last thing to go was punching power. What do you think about Berto after four years in activity versus Javante in Atlanta? Uh, is that no? Like, no, nah, I don't want to see Tank do that. Or do you like, is, that, is there intrigue in that? No, I think uh, I think it's a downgrade for for Tank. No one right? likes that fight. <laughs> That's sad. Yeah. I'm the only one talking about that Berto fight, man. <laughs> oh man. Hey, uh, let, let me jump in here with a question, Tim. This King. I mean, who's giving you some of your best sparring? Mm, um. Well, look, I, I went down to to spar Manny Pacquiao actually for for three weeks. Um, oh, wow. That was good fun um, in the Philippines once. Um. But, you know, some there was this one boy here in in, in Australia. Um, he gave me a bit of trouble. Um, it's always war. Um, but I've been a few times to LA, Vegas. Um, no, no one, no one crazy in my eyes. I got a quick question, Tim. How you doing? This is Micah K. So since nobody asked this, um, who do you have winning between Spence versus Pacquiao? I think Spence. Mm. I think he's too. He's, he's on another level right now. All right, just three more and you're out of here. We got Eddie Bola de Grasa Navarez in Las Vegas that says, how old were you when you realized your father was a fighter? And what was your favorite fight of his? Yeah, well, Good question. I think um, at the start, look, my dad's always been a boxer. I was from, I was from birth. Uh, he was fighting, but my favorite fight would definitely. Yeah, be but the he, he's know? asking, when did you realize it as a child? Like, when did you realize? Oh wow, he's. All oh, right. Um, I remember my dad saying he's always the king of the world, and I think that was um <laughs> when I was only, when I was only young, maybe ten years old, not even mm. eight, something like that. Wow. 
I wonder was that you know, after he did that to Ju- Zuda, uh, Jazz. Uh, I wonder was that Judah. after he did that to Judah, uh, did he feel that way? Did you realize how famous he was at that age, though? Like, did you at ten years old? Did you like realize, like, yo, my dad is? Yeah, huge. well, look, ev- everywhere we used to go, he used to get um, mobbed. Yeah, wow, that's just how it was yeah. in, in in Australia, you know. <laughs> so, so yeah. was your life? Like, uh, uh, tell me you've seen the Rocky movie. You remember when they took his, his son, they, mm-hmm. they, they took his son's coat. I'm not saying you got your coat took in school, but was it rough being the son of a legend in elementary school? <laughs> well, you know, you there, there was a few few punch-ons and, and, and people talking smack, but, you know, that's that's the way it goes. You got you to show them. You got to show them who's up. boss, huh? All right. <laughs> Yo, I love it. Victor Banuelos. Uh, well, you just answered this. He said, what up, champ? Do you believe Earl Spence Jr. has the ability... Oh, actually, this is different. Do you believe he has the ability to retire Manny Pacquiao? Also, can Sean Porter defeat Terrence Crawford? Yeah, I think I think Sean Porter can actually defeat Terrence Crawford. He, he's he got this awkward style where he jumps around in and out and he presents trouble for a lot of people, you know. you got to come in with the right game plan to, to beat him. And um, what was the first question? Do you think Earl can retire Pacquiao? Oh, it's a, it's a big one. But um, I don't want to be disrespectful to Pacquiao, man. He's, he's achieved so much, so I don't know how to say it. But I, I think I think Errol will win uh, to retire him. Um, I don't know. Jordan, real quick, Tim. What, what do you think about Earl moving up to 154? Earl Spence. Can't wait. Yeah, I think... Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. It'll, it'll present some big fights in the future, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Baker in Florida says, would your team offer Danny Garcia $10 million at 54 in Australia? <laughs> that's, I don't know. My team my team can come up with that with that type of money. We'll, we'll see. Do you um, think Danny Garcia. generates that? You versus Danny, does it generate enough to cover uh, such an outrageous purse? Mm, I don't know. I'm not too sure. <laughs> All right. Well, that was I think the Gennady last one. Golovkin does. I, think Golovkin <laughs> I does want the sure. Golovkin fight. I like that yeah. fight, man. I, I I like that fight. I, I do. do I I think yeah. you can actually land that fight. I mean, oh, man, he so. must be looking at it like if he's sitting down with his team, he's got to be like, look, Ryota Morota's obviously a natural 160 pounder. You know, he does bring a title and a country like Zoo, but there is a element of danger. And if I can beat Zoo, that Rayota Morota fight is still there. So why not mm-hmm. go beat Global and fight in Australia, mm-hmm. beat you if he can, and then go beat the mm-hmm. Japanese champion. But you have to be upset-minded. Mm-hmm. I love that fight, man. Tell the team, get on that mm-hmm. first. He is right, yeah. I'm telling you. Imagine stealing him from Canelo. I mean, then all of a sudden you become a, Cale- a Canelo option. Canelo's never fought in Australia. I mean, the, you open up mm-hmm. a door... Of like Pandora's Everywhere. box yeah. for boxing right there. That's a beautiful one. But Tim, man, thank you for coming on the program. Please give out any social media, any, you know, ticket information, whatever you want to do at this point. We we do appreciate your time, man. And uh, we look to have you back on the Boxing Voice Radio. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for having me, guys. Have a good thanks, one. Thanks, champ. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Tim Zoo. Yo, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, entitled betting shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.